Hi, and thanks for your interest in helping me work in the studio. I made this video as a tutorial to give you some uh, primer for the terms and concepts of working with props and animals in the studio. So the drawing here is of a photo studio. It's kind of three-dimensional. Uh, I want you to imagine a center line. This center line is obviously not drawn three-dimensional because it would look more like a little bit of a sideways L, but uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll just go with uh, this center line right here that divides the studio roughly in half. Now, <clears throat> because where I'm working from and where you're working from, my left is uh, different than your left. My left will be your right. So if I tell you to move props around and I tell you to move them left or move them right, uh, it just causes complete confusion on the part of the studio assistants. So I developed a uh, set of terminology, if you will, that helps my studio assistants know what direction to move props. Uh, the first one is the in command. So if you imagine, and we have here a, ch a chess piece of a rook. And a rook, if you know how to play chess, a, ch a rook can only move in four directions. And so can props in the studio only move four directions. Props in the studio should never move diagonal. Uh, I will always tell you one of four directions how to move a prop. And contrary to what you see here, where you're seeing this rook uh, move all the way across from one end of the studio to the other, it will be very rare for me to tell you to move a prop that far. Usually a very subtle movement is all that I need because I'm just going for a perspective in the camera lens. So these movements that I'm showing here are exaggerated, obviously because I want to show you um, very clearly the different directions that are represented. It's always relative to the center line where I'm telling you to move a prop. So if I tell you, if, if a prop starts out right here in this general vicinity, and I tell you take that prop and move it in, then it should just move in towards the center line. It should remain exactly where it is relative to the uh, position to the front of the studio, and the front of the studio being down here near the camera. It should stay in that same relative position to the front of the studio, but it literally just shimmies closer to the center line. Okay, And this is the same if the prop is on uh, the right-hand side of the studio, which in your case would be the left hand side of the studio. See why that gets to be confusing? In always means the same thing. In, no matter which side the prop is on, always means move that prop closer to the center line of the studio. Okay, so if in means to move it closer, out means to move the prop further from the center line of the studio out towards the edges. Forward means to move a prop forward relative to the position of the camera. Now what we're seeing here is a nice example of an, of an optical illusion, but it actually is the same type of optical illusion that happens inside of a camera. Even though if we look here at my illusion, at my arrows, that the arrows measure the same relative distance to the edge of the studio. Without, without those turned on, it would appear that this rook has actually moved a little bit diagonal because it doesn't look now that it's like, it doesn't look lined up the same. And that's because of perspective. <clears throat> so be, expect that if I tell you to move a prop forward, it will very likely be accompanied with uh, moving a prop either in or out as well. So there will probably be, I'll tell you, move it forward about two feet and then move it in about six inches. And I'll never tell you a diagonal direction because I can't tell you diagonal directions, but I can tell you in, out, forward, and back which is the last one. 
And here again, back, we see that same optical illusion happening here. Um, because although the measures, those arrows, give us the same relative distance to the edge of the studio, just by moving that rook back, it appears that the rook has now come more towards the center of the studio. And it, you know, part of that is because we're looking at a three-dimensional model of the studio on a two-dimensional surface. But the funny thing is, the same thing happens in the camera. So if I tell you to move a prop back, it will also often also be accompanied with moving it uh, either out a bit or moving it in a bit as well. But I'll always tell you, move it back two feet, move it in six inches. And that would mean to move it back to its current position and then move it closer to the center line by six inches or the reverse, move it back and out six inches. So it's moving back two feet and out six inches. Okay, everything is always think in terms of the chess piece, the rook, when you're moving props around a studio. It's a very important concept. Okay, so there is covering movement of props in the studio. Let's talk a moment about, um, about positioning animals. So let's see here, let me turn off this. So let's say we have a grouping of dogs. Something else you'll hear me talk about a lot is if you've got the camera position down here at the front of the studio and we have a group of dogs. Uh, something you'll always hear me saying is that I need to get the plane of focus so that the dogs are all lined up on the plane of focus. So what exactly does that mean? Well, when I'm talking about the plane of focus, I'm talking about the line, the invisible line, if you can imagine this line intersecting the studio coming you know, down from the ceiling and going straight through the floor of the studio. And this is the line, it's called the plane of focus. <clears throat> and what I, would, what I wanna do is get it so that all of the dogs as closely as possible have their eyes all lined up on the plane of focus. This is particularly important if we have combinations where we have big dogs and small dogs. Uh, but it is also still important if there is just two big dogs. And the reason is that cameras are limited by a thing called depth of field. And although I can use kind of a large depth of field in the studio, no matter what, the dog who appears uh, behind the plane of focus is A, never going to be quite as sharp as the dog who is actually on the plane of focus, and B, the dog who appears behind is also optically, illusionally going to appear smaller than the dog that's closer to the camera. So for those reasons, I always like to keep dogs as much, much as we can. I like to try to keep the plane of focus so that the dogs are all relatively the same, represented the same size in the photograph. But also when we have multiple dogs in the picture, it helps with the sharpness because every dog is gonna be equally crisp in the picture. And it's especially true when there's a little tiny one involved. Um, you you definitely want to have the little tiny one, the plane of focus, so that the little one is uh, just as sharp as the bigger dogs. So those are some very important studio concepts, and thank you for taking this 10 minutes to go through and learn some of this terminology. I'll see you in the studio.